Hello, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. We are going to make these beautiful mitts. Now, like seriously, friends, these feel and look so luxurious that I can't even believe I made them. <laughs> I'm using my 46 needle Addy, but you can use your 48 needle. That's no problem. And uh, you know what? There was no cover on my yarn, but I believe it's either loops and threads white or it's Bernat premium white. You use whichever your favorite four weight white yarn is and uh, they will turn out just as beautiful. Or use whatever color you like. I've also made this matching beanie so you can look for that tutorial um, below. I'll have the link in the description below or just go to my channel and find it. And it matches beautifully. I made it on my 22 needle machine. So friends, get your supplies and let's quickly just get right into it. All right, friends, are you ready to begin? We're going to take our yarn tail and we're going to make it long, okay? So one, make a tail that'll go around your barrel um, two to, twice, maybe a little bit more, okay? Well, it's, it's literally gonna only go around once, but we, we're gonna need more for the loops that we're making. Then you're gonna put a slip knot on your finger and you're gonna have a knot like that, okay? This side, the one that's on the right, is your tail that you just took off of your ball okay that's going to go on the right side this tail is coming out of your ball okay it's going to be on your left side you're going to find your first black needle and you're going to put that loop on that we just made underneath the nook of that needle actually you're going to do it so that when you put it on this is the tail that you made this is the long tail so that it sits like that okay you want this the end coming out of your skein to be this one in the back you're going to then rotate your barrel so that your next needle is up. This is a long tail cast on. This, the one that's closest to you is always the one that you took off. It's your yarn tail, okay? You're going to put your thumb and your finger in there. And then you're going to spread it open and it's like a little V. And then you're gonna tip your hand up. And then you're gonna take your finger underneath that first loop over the second um, over the second strand and over the third. Grab that third one and bring it through that loop that's there, okay? Then you're gonna just pull on these two a little bit to tighten that loop. Put it over, ne over that needle and under the nook. Leave a little space there, don't tighten it too tight. Rotate your barrel, we're gonna do this all the way around, okay? So this is the skein, this is the long tail. We're going to put our finger in there and our thumb, make a V, tip it up, go under, over, over and grab that third one and pull it through. That's the loop you're gonna put on your needle. We're gonna do this all the way around. Now I have a video on my channel um, how to do this and I teach you slow, more slowly and more methodically. I um, would encourage you to go and look at that video because I, I don't want to take the time to teach that on here any more than what I just did. So you go ahead and you learn that long tail cast on if you don't know it already. Then you come back and you see me when you're done that. But making sure, and I think on that video, I might've corrected it already, but it's, it's just coming to my thoughts. On that video, um, I think I made a, a correction in the description. I had this tail in on this side. You wanna make sure that the tail that you took off your skein, the one that has the end, is the one that's always closest to your body when you're doing, when you're making your loops, okay? And that the one that's in, farthest away this one here is your skein coming off your skein okay so just make sure if I didn't make that correction um, in the video I made it on the I can't remember because it was such a long time ago but I remember that I had done it wrong um, and I think I like I went and corrected it so anyways go and watch that if you need to get your cast on done and I'll see you when you get to the end Okay, I'm coming up on the end here. I'm going to change my row counter to zero before I get there. 
Now that might have taken some of you a long time. You may have had to, you may have got, had to do it a couple of times and gotten frustrated, but you know what? Keep persevering because we all had to start somewhere. You should have seen me when I first did this too. It's like, I think I probably had to redo it many, many times um, just to get it right. But you know what? Once you get it, you get it. And, and then that's just a new skill you've learned. So I just finished my last one. Now I'm going to take that tail. I have just a little bit left. And I'm going to put that into the center. I'm going to open my latch. I'm going to put this yarn tail into that feeder. Now we are going to slowly knit the first row because we because we have cast on the way we did. Sometimes the, needle, the loops have a hard time falling down over the needles. Not always. But you want to just help them down. Making sure that that loop goes down over every red tooth. So this small, or this um, first row, takes a little bit of time, okay? Push that down. This one pushed down. But it is so worth it to take your time, okay? I'm going to do a few needles and I'm going to pull on my my working yarn just to tighten up that tension. Okay. Almost there. I see that black divider coming around. Of course, I take a black permanent marker. And I mark the divider that's between the last white and first black, so I always see when the end of my row is coming. And there, now we've done one row. And we're gonna keep going, and we're gonna do 15 rows. Okay? So you keep going just like this. I have a little bit of tension on, like, through, between my fingers like that, and then I just squeeze them ever so slightly. Not very much. And I'm gonna keep knitting just like this until I have 15 rows done. And this will be our beginning of our ribbed knit cuff. Okay friends, so keep going, 15 rows, and I'll see you back. I am on my 15th row, and before, I, um, before my counter changes, I'm going to set this to zero again, okay? Because we're gonna start our next section of our mitt. And to do that, we're gonna start at zero. So I'm going to Take it till I have that black divider in be in the middle of my yarn guide, and then my last white, my first black, is at the um, is centered there. So we're gonna do our rib knit now, and so we're going to knit. I like to take this out. I just find it easier. Um, you can leave it in if you want, and and just uh, do it however works for you. But we're gonna knit this first needle. So now it drops down between those red teeth. Then I take my yarn tail and I wrap it around my, <laughs> my counter, just so it holds that little um, loop down over those red teeth and it secures my, um, my yarn tail for me while I work. In my second one, we're gonna rib. So we're gonna take our yarn uh, loom pick, we're gonna take that loop off the needle, and you gotta be careful here because you, we're not gonna go all the way down to the bottom, we're going to unpick 15 rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and this is where you gotta be holding that loop. This is our cast on loop and 15. And so now that you're, you're pinching that loop so you don't lose it, you're gonna take your crochet hook and I'm using a five millimeter. I'm gonna poke it from the top to the bottom into that loop, okay? Then I'm gonna grab that first bar and I'm gonna bring it through that loop. Now I have a new loop on my uh, hook and I'm gonna grab that next bar and bring it through that loop. And the next one, all the way up. So you will do this 15 times. Okay. And there we go. Then what I do is I pop that side underneath this red divider and I pop that side underneath that red divider before I put this loop over the needle because that prevents it from hurting the, the stitches that are on either side. It doesn't pull on them then, okay? And then you just lift that up and over, put it over the two red teeth, just like that, okay? Unwind your yarn tail, go underneath that divider, 
back this up just a smidgen, go underneath this needle that you, of the row that you just did, then knit the next one and repeat the process through that those two little red teeth and wrap it around your counter. We're going to take this loop off. We're going to unpick 15 rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Sometimes this last one snags on me. So we're going to hold that loop. We're going to put our hook in there from the top to the bottom, grab that first bar, bring it through the loop. That's one. Go up to the next bar, bring it through the loop. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and one more. Fifteen. Pop those bars underneath both dividers, up and over that needle onto the red teeth. We have just ribbed our second row. Take your yarn, put it under the divider, under that needle that you just worked, and under the next one, because we're going to knit that next row. And then we're going to repeat this process all the way around, ribbing every second needle. Now I'm going to give a different ca camera angle, because I'm not sure that you were able to see the 15th row down there, because I can't see the screen when I'm doing this. Um, and if you could see it, well, you're going to see it again. So <laughs> I'm going to just change the angle for you. There we go. So I'm going to unwind. Oops, no, I'm going to keep that wound because I already did that. I'm going to take this. We ribbed this one. We knit this one. We're going to rib this one. So I'm going to take that loop off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay? Keeping your finger on that loop so you don't lose it. Putting your hook in. Taking that first bar, that's one. Second bar, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I love doing this. I really do. I find it very fun. It doesn't um, take as long as what you would think. It does take some time, but you know what? If you're going to make different, do t different techniques and you're going to... Um, challenge yourself in your projects it's going to take more time and that's okay you want to grow in your skills and uh and improve in in different ways you're going to have to take the time for it and so we do it together and it works so enjoy the process don't get frustrated frustrated by it and if if uh if you're finding it hard just keep persevering keep persevering because you will be so glad that you did okay i'm going to do every second row i'm going to rib until i get all the way around and you'll notice as we're going we set our counter before, so this is row one. It's row one of our patterning for the next um, section. So once we get our, our ribbing done, we will have row one done of our next patterning because we're doing a, a, a knitted row as we go along to do our ribbing, okay? So keep going till you get to the end and when I get um, to the last one, I'll see you back. I've made it around, I have one left and if you're joining me, that means you have two. So I'm gonna just finish this one, this last one. That means you made it. Good job. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And if it was your first time, congratulations. You've learned a new skill. <laughs> and you'll be able to uh, use this on lots of different projects. It looks like a, a really wide cuff, but you seen in the beginning, it's not. It actually is perfect. Okay. But if you want it wider, so you can fold it down and in in half and make it even thicker. You can do that. Or if you want it narrower, you can do that as well. I find this to be the right length. Okay. So I'm going to now knit that last one. And open up my yarn feeder. Pop that in there. And now I'm going to continue on. And we're going to do our patterning. I just clicked on row two. So I'm going to knit row two. My handle is squeaky. And then we are going to do our patterning for row three. Okay, take this back out of your yarn feeder and we are going to go behind the first two needles. We're gonna wrap them. We're gonna go behind the first two needles in front and then behind again. We're gonna 
go ahead to the next two needles, these two. So three needle three and four, behind, in front, behind. Needle five and six, behind, in front, behind. And I'm not putting any tension on there, I'm just keeping it nice and loose. The next two, behind, in front, behind. Very, very easy to do. This is the lace pattern that I've shown you in a, in a couple other projects. Um, you can check those out on my channel, but so much fun to do. I just, I love it. You'll get the hang of how to hold your fingers and to do this. Um, some people can just wrap it like, like I can't do it with one hand. I just, just can't. So this is how I do it. <laughs> the next two behind, I wrap it around, grab it again with these, with this hand. And that's how I manage to wrap. The next two and the next two this project goes so fast at this point and the next two you would think that it goes slow because you're you're having to stop but you know what this is an easy stitch and it makes such a beautiful beautiful patterning and it's not hard again just like in ribbing sometimes if you want to improve in your skills and you want something a little bit nicer and a little bit different you got to be willing to take the time for it so I hope that uh, you find it enjoyable. We've got the last two coming up. I'm going to pop this into my yarn guide, making sure that it's between the last white and the first black. Close my latch. And we have just finished the first three row repeat after our ribbing. So we did two rows of regular knit, then we did one row of lace. And so now it just clicked on row four. So I'm gonna do two rows of regular. Always going slow in that first one because those loops from the lace, you want to make sure they go down over the red teeth. I actually go pretty slow for this whole project. And this is row two, which is row five actually. The second row of our three row repeat. So rows four and five are straight knit. I see that black divider coming around. Now, the third row of this three row repeat, which is row six, is going to be a lace row. So I'm gonna bring up those first two needles, behind, in front, behind, the next two, behind, in front, behind. I'm gonna finish this row with you and then explain what to do. Behind, in front, behind. So this is row six. The second set of our three row repeat. just love doing this and you know when when the results are so gorgeous it's just a joy to do it I think white beanies white mittens anything that is pure white is just so gorgeous I, I honestly I just love it so these mitts I think are I just I'm so excited about them because I think they're absolutely beautiful and uh, I hope that you enjoy them too. I, you know, even do them in other colors too. They'll be just as gorgeous in other colors, but there's something that about white. These reminded me of a snowflake. That's why I'm calling them snowflake mittens. Okay, um, the beauty of a snowflake. I'm almost around. See, that didn't take too long. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna open my latch. I'm going to put this between the last white, the first black, and I'm going to knit two rows. This is now row seven, just clicked on row seven. Making sure those loops go down over the red teeth. And row eight, this is the second row of the three row repeat. I see that black divider coming around. I'm going to do now, now do my lace stitch. So always make sure that before you begin your lace stitch, it's between the last white and the first black, then you're gonna wrap the next two. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna continue this three row repeat until you have 30 rows on your counter. So we now are clicking on row nine, which is the third row in my third set. You're gonna do 10 sets of three, 10 row repeats altogether. So if you keep going and you do your lace now, and then you're gonna do two rows of knit, one row of lace, two rows of knit, one row of, of lace, keep repeating that until you have 30 on your counter, till your, your counter reaches number 30. That's doing this row, three row repeat 10 times.
I have finished my 10 rounds. So my counter is at 30. It's going to click on 31. Now I measured my hand from here to here and it's almost seven inches. So if yours is much longer and you want it bigger, I would say this is a small medium um, mitt. If you want it bigger, then do one more row of patterning before we end here. Okay. And uh, then you'll have an extra three rows and that will give, give you a little bit bigger of a longer of a mitt. Okay. But to end off now, we're going to just do three rows of straight knit. So this is row 31, 32, and 33. Oh, ran out of yarn. Look at that. <laughs> See, that's why it is so important to hold it with your hand, with your fingers, because then you can feel it coming. Um, and I caught it on time, so I'm going to just barely though. So I'm going to just add my yarn into my yarn guide. Make sure that, that those two strands are between the same two needles. I almost made it. Ah. And then once I get a few needles in, I'm going to tie a really firm knot. Just like that, okay? And I'm just going to cut them off to make them even. Pop that down. I'm going to continue around to the end of my row. So that was three rows of straight knit. Now what you're going to do <laughs> is you're going to take off a long tail. One that will go around your barrel two, two uh, times. And we're going to cast off. To cast off, I'm going to open that latch, put that yarn tail between the last white and the first black. Make sure that that's where it goes because we still have to finish knitting this one. And this last white needle has to pick up this yarn and drop it down to knit that row, that um, last needle there as well. Okay, then we're going to rotate our barrel and I'm going to take off the loose stitches. If you are new, make sure that you put your finger over the one beside the one you're taking off so that you don't drop that row. Because if you pull up too high on this, it could pull this loop off those red teeth and your row will drop. And uh, you don't want that to happen. So until you can get some slack in here, um, then you can take a couple more or a few at a time, just like that. I'm gonna put my finger over that as I pull this through. And we're going to continue on removing all of our stitches from our machine. I don't generally use this needle. I don't, it came with the machine and so it fits in those grooves really nicely, but I like my wool needles better. I just happened to grab this one because it was handy. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing that I'm doing here all the way around your barrel until all of your stitches are off the machine and then I'll see you back. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, just so gorgeous. And you know, a single layer beanie would be beautiful. This exact pattern in a single layer beanie. And this would fit your head. You probably just need to make it exactly like this and close off the end. <laughs> okay, there's a suggestion for you. Okay, but what we're going to do with this now is we're going to just give it a light stretch. Don't, don't pull too hard, but you want to still line up here your rows and make everything beautiful. And then the, the hardest part for me, seriously, is this next part. Some of you might find this very easy. I don't. And that is making this, this very top loop here. We have to tighten so that our ribbing, it's not, you don't want it all loopy and loose there. You want it to be tighter. So I, I struggle with this one, to be honest with you. I've done it many times, but last night I got the one, the other mitt so tangled that it took me, I could have made another mitt in the time it took me to untangle it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find which direction it's coming. So when you pull on it, this is the loop that it's coming from this one here, and then it's going around this way. So this is the, this is, is, um, it came around this way and this is the end. So we have to go this way to tighten it. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll it up till we find those very top loops. I don't know why I found this hard because maybe because I must have pulled on one wrong loop and it tightened the, the wrong thing because we're going to go for all these top little loops and you can see them very easily. They cross over each other, but I must have pulled on one of these and, uh, and I had a mess. So do this slowly, my friends. We're going to take this one and we're going to just pull. Okay. And then we're going to go over to this next one. 
and we're going to pull. Not so tight that uh, you don't want a tight cuff. Uh, you don't want it to be really tight here, but you just want it to be nice and beautiful. So then you can see where this string is, where this row is coming out. It's underneath this loop. That's the one you want to pull. And so you're just going to just lightly, and this is going to get really long. You're going to just lightly pull on that. And then look where it's coming out, where it's under. It's this one. This is actually very easy to do. So I don't know why I messed it up yesterday, but I did. And then it's underneath this bar. So I'm going to pull on this bar. And then I'm going to just move along, unravel that. It's underneath this bar, so I'm going to grab that one. And I'm going to do that all the way around my piece. See, I scared you at first, and now it's not so hard, right? It's underneath this one. I'm going to pull this one. Underneath this one. So I'm going to pull on this one. See how this is getting longer, and we're taking the slack out. And there we go. Find where it's under. That's most definitely what I did. I had it rolled over too much and I probably pulled on this one. Don't do that. Look for the loop that's on the top. It's underneath this one, but it's also underneath that one. So there we go. That's this one that I'm going to take. You'll figure it out. That's the best I can show you. And you'll figure it out from there, okay? And it'll be this one. Moving it right along. I'll do a couple more with you. Use your needle to find that for you. See, it's underneath this loop here. I would think to take this one, but that's actually the second row. So you want to take the top one and just pull it. And what we're doing is we're making this nice and neat. And then we're going to close it, um, close this together. You're probably wondering, well, how does that look, make a cuff? Because um, this is going to be in half, but I will show you what I do. But you're going to take your time and you're going to go around and you're going to finish this till you get to the other end and I'll meet you when I get near to the end, okay? All right, I've made it around, but not without a problem at the end. You know, folks, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be teaching you this, but I got another knot. And I have been working at it, and I can't undo it. So, I'm going to show you how I fix something that I can't fix. <laughs> sorry, hopefully you will... Um, I think that's where the knot is, right there. And every time I try to undo it, I get... I have a problem, so... It's okay because all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissor if this happens to you. Because what, what is going to happen is if you could, all I had is one left. And if um, once I get to that one, then all I do is pull this one and it's, it tightens the whole thing. But it's okay. Um, I am just going to take these two here and I'm going to tie them. Because I'm at the end and that's where my last one happened too, but it was worse than this. So at the end, I'm having a... I had a struggle with trying to figure out which one to take, but that's okay. I'm I'm not going to redo this and pretend that it never happened because that's not going to benefit you any either. It's just going to, when you uh, mess it up, you're going to feel bad and think, I can't do this. And yes, you can. There's always a way to fix it. Okay. So I'm going to just hide that. Now 
This yarn is very, very soft. And I think that that's partly why I, I'm having a problem. Okay, but this, this is what it's gonna look like and it's totally, totally fine. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around to the other side. I had to add that yarn right here. I need to hide this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just hide this around the seam right there because it's going to be gathered and then it won't poke out. From there, we're going to find our tail. There it is. But let's turn our um, project the other way so that we can, we can put our tail and our, our sewing on the inside, okay? So pull that tail back out. Look how pretty that is on the other side too. And we're just gonna pull this closed. So smooth out that top edge as you're pulling. So you get a nicer finish on the end. Okay. Do not cut this off because you're gonna need it for sewing. This one's a tiny wee bit long. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit, but you need to have the length on it. And we're gonna go around and we're going to seam this top closed, okay? So just pick up the stitches around the top row and pull. And pull. Sorry guys at that last part with the um, pulling tight of the rib didn't work all the way to the end, but I hope that you got the idea uh, and that you were successful at yours. It didn't uh, discourage me because, you know, there's always, a, I got to almost to the end and so there's a way to fix it. You don't have to start your project over. You just have to be patient and, and figure out another way, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna tie a knot onto there and one more. We're going to pop this needle back through that center so it's on the other side. And turn it back right side out. Just like so. Okay, we're going to now go down and we're going to, we're going to work on this piece right here. Okay, you're going to take your crochet hook. I'm going to use my, my five millimeter hook. Now, if you just cannot do this you can sew this up closed um, with your needle but just sew it loosely because you need to have the stretch in there and the way i'm going to crochet it is going to give us some stretch okay so i'm just going to take my needle my crochet hook and i'm going to pop it underneath the layers of both sides there at the top row okay then i'm going to take that tail that's hanging and i'm going to yarn over and bring it through then i have a loop on my hook yarn over Take that through the loop okay then i'm going to chain one this is what's going to help me get my elasticity as we um go along so that i don't it i'm not i don't want this tightened where i just need it closed off so we can proceed to the next part but when i put it off my wrist i still want it to have stretch so that's why i'm doing a chain one see the little valleys there here's here's a row there's a row there's a row there's a row i'm going to go into each one of these little valleys here so i'm going to now take this across pick up the top and the top, yarn over, bring it through. I'm doing this very loosely. You can see my loops on my hook are loose. Single crochet, chain one. Go into that next one, just under the very top. Single crochet, chain one. Now I know, I know that there's some of you who are saying, I cannot crochet. Well, you know, this part I think you could. Don't discredit yourself. This is, you're not crocheting a huge project. You're just crocheting across a row. <laughs> so you can do it, friends. Okay. So all you're going to do is put your hook into that seam, go right across, yarn over, which means you pick it up with your hook. You let the hook pick up that yarn. You bring it through. And now you have two loops on your hook. You take that yarn on underneath the hook there and you bring it through both loops. You can do that. And then you yarn over and pull it through the loop. Yarn over and single crochet, chain one. Yarn over, single crochet, 
chain one make sure you have a long piece this one i'm going to run out of might just make it yarn over if you run out of yarn you're going to just take man you are learning a lot of new things on this particular video but that's good we need to learn i'm going to grab my yarn i've got my two loops on the hook so let me just take that back and show you how you would do that. Okay, so we did our chain one. We're gonna go inside that loop. We're gonna yarn over. We're gonna pull up a loop. I got two loops on my hook. I'm gonna drop that one. I'm gonna pick up the new one. Hold that both of them with my finger like that so I have some tightness on there. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull it through both of those loops. Chain one. And just continue on. Very, very easy. And hopefully yours was long enough that you don't have to do that, especially if you're new and you're just learning. But hey, that's just another, another technique to learn, right? And I'm going to do one more right here. Just a single crochet. I don't need to do a chain one, but I will yarn over as though I'm doing a chain one. Pull that through. Don't cut it off. Just pull it through. And... Mine's attached to the ball yet. And there we have finished that closure at the top there. And it looks like this, okay? There is a right side and a wrong side to that. This is the right side because when you're looking at it, the stitches are beautiful. This is the wrong side. You can see the difference, okay? We are going to sew this so the wrong right sides are together, just like this, so that our seams are on, are on the inside. We're gonna thread our needle and now we're going to just take a look at our rows here, okay? We're going to take that thin, skinny row, and we're going to put one beside the other, just like so, so that we can do the mattress stitch. Because now the wide part of the V on each of these rows, I'll put my needle in there, is going to the left, and that's exactly what we want. Before I start, I'm going to just connect this other top corner, just like that. And then I'm going to go across and it's very hard to see at first because we have that crochet edge there. So you're going to just eyeball it. You're going to go in and you're going to come out the center of that first stitch that you can see, that you can see easily. Then I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to go into that, come out the first stitch that I can see easily there. We've set up our row. See now I can hold those two together and you see how those stitches are lined up, the wide part of the V on each side. I'm going to go into this stitch because that's where that yarn tail is coming out. I'm going to pick up that first bar and the second bar. That's two stitches, pull through. I'm going to go in where this one came out. I'm going to pick up that first bar and the second bar and pull through. And I'm going to keep doing that, picking up two stitches all the way down the row. Now I do have a video on how to do the mattress stitch. If uh, this is too quick for you, you can go ahead and look for that. But basically you go into the same stitch that you came out of. I'm coming out of this one, I'm going into the same stitch and I'm picking up two stitches, which is two bars. Going across, come going in where I came out and doing the same thing. I'm gonna do this all the way down to the base of my cuff. Okay. Almost there. These are so soft. Okay. I'm going to actually take the top now and pinch it and then pull on this yarn tail. And see how that beautifully closes it? And you have a seamless join that is, you can't even tell that it was there, but this is even the inside. It's even nicer on the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to, here is where the bottom of my my um, cuff is. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just connect that so it's even. Tie a little bit of a knot there, just one. And then just let this go. We're going to go around to the other side. Isn't that beautiful? We are going to thread our needle and we're going to begin sewing up. We're going to do the same kind of a stitch, but because this is lacy, it's hard to, to really see it. Like you can see um, the one row there. Um, 
that's coming across because we had we had two rows of straight knit and then the lacy row is a little bit wider. Um, you can see them there, but it's a little bit harder. So what I want you to do is to flatten this out on the inside and the outside so this is perfectly straight. We are not going to worry so much about following the same row as we do for blankets um, with this mattress stitch. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to just join the two sides. Go through just like that and do it one more time. And then we're going to just follow that row up. You can, you can find the row that you see the best, which is this one here for me and this one here. And you can try to get on that row, but you're not gonna be able to, to get to it till you're about here, till you're about here, which is totally okay. We know what the, what the um, patterning is. You go in, you pick up a couple stitches on that side, you go in and you pick up a couple stitches Here's where I came out. I'm going to pick up a couple stitches the best that I can. Here's where I came out. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a couple and I'm going to continue that until I can get to about there, which is my row. This one I see already. We're not going to go all the way up, so make sure you don't pause this video and then go and close that or you'll have no thumb. I'm going to show you where, you, how you place your thumb for your individual hand, okay? But we're going to keep going up. Keep going up. Now I can see that row very, very nicely. You know, there's a lot of detail on this mitt, a lot of techniques that you had to learn, but persevere through it. If you're watching this video before you actually make one, persevere through it because you know, you'll learn a lot of techniques and you'll you'll be so proud of yourself when you get it done. So I'm pulling on that. So I'm pinching down here and I'm pulling on this. I've got a big wide opening there. I'm not going to go any farther. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my hand in there until your fingertips meet the top. When your fingertips meet the top, you know that's the right length for you. If I would, if I, you know, continued sewing and, and never paid any attention to it, I might have a big bulky thing here. Um... I didn't tell you to do that in any of my other mitt videos. Maybe I did in one, um, but you know what? I learn as I go too. So put your, your finger in there till it's up at the top where you want it. And then you can continue closing this up just like this. Until it sits where it needs to sit. I'm gonna do one more on this side. And that's, that's from here to here is the length of my hand. And so that's exactly where I'm going to stop. I'm going to take this over. I'm going to pick up that stitch, pick up this one. And I'm going to place a knot in there just so it stays, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take this strand off my needle. I'm going to put this other one back on. I'm going to put my hand back into my mitt. Okay, and I know now I'm going to follow this one down. Following that same row, you can put a stitch marker in there if you like and then do it while it's off your hand, but I, I love to have it perfectly accurate, so I like to keep it on my hand. Okay, and I, I it's easy to do. I'm going to do go back into where I came out up to there and back into here and do one more and there you go that is where my thumb is going to be I'm going to even go a little bit more because it stretches so now that I that I know that if I pick up two more stitches on either side it's going to fit perfectly um, I can take it off and I can go ahead and do that Two more on this side. I'm going to try it on just to make sure. That's perfect. And then you have your little um, section here that's before your cuff and that helps your cuff to sit nicely too. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie my knot right here as I did here and then we're going to um, do that to our second mitt and I'll show you that when I have that done and we'll be right back. All right, so I took both and I measured them. And by doing it on my on my hand, 
Um, it's amazing because they're exactly the same. Like they're exactly the same. So um, that's the best way to do it. And so I am going to, if you have two strands, one on each end here, hide one of them. Hide the, hide the one that's the shortest. Okay, so this one I already knotted off. And I'm just going to, remember this is the insides of our mitts, even though it looks like it could be the outside. It's the inside. I'm going to just go ahead and hide that into the seam. I'm going to cut that off. We've got our two mitts that just need their thumbs. And we're going to grab our 22 needle machine and we'll work on that next. Okay, friends? If you're ready to begin, we're going to bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. We're going to cast on. Taking a yarn that is a different color in contrast in color from your working project so you can easily see your stitches. We're going to go behind and in front of every needle just like this. It should be in front of that last white one. Then we're going to knit. I knit seven rows, but you're going to want to go slow for this first round. Sometimes um, people always say that it's snagging. Um, how come my loop is halfway like in between the two red teeth. And sometimes that can happen on the waist yarn or on the uh, first row. So you wanna make sure that as your needles are passing by, that that loop is going down over both red teeth. See this one here, it's, it's split in half and only half of that yarn went through. So I've got to just help that over just like that. And then, and this one too split, sometimes that happens. Just give it a, give it a little helping hand and you're fine. Now I'm gonna knit seven rows. I think that's one more. There we go. And before I get to the end of that row, I'm going to change my row counter to zero. I'm going to line up the last white, the first black needle, cut off that waist yarn, open the latch, put it between that last white and the first black needle. And now we are going to grab our working yarn, pop it into your yarn feeder. In between the last white, the first black, we're going to knit two rows, okay? Let's leave a, a quite a long tail there, just uh, for sewing, okay? So this is one and two. And our third row is our lace row, same as with our body of our mitt. So now for this one, we're gonna bring the first two needles up and we're gonna wrap it. The next two and wrap. The next two, wrap. The next two, and the next two, you can do just a plain thumb if you like and just do 14 rows of solid knitting. Um, but I, I wanna keep it um, consistent with the body of the glove. So we are going to do the lace patterning. Okay, so this is row three complete. You're going to pop that yarn between the last white, the first block into the yarn feeder. We're gonna knit two more rows. Watching to make sure those loops go down over the red teeth. So this is row four and now row five. Every third row is a lace row. Take that out of our yarn guide. In between the last white, the first black, we're going to wrap row six as a lace row. Okay, folks, you're gonna do this till you have 12 rows complete. That's four repeat patterns, okay? So keep going, this is row six. I'll take you to the end here. All right, so we've done six rows. We've done two pattern repeats, two rows of straight knit, one row of lace, two rows of straight knit, one row of lace. You're gonna now do two rows of straight knit, one row of lace, two rows of straight knit, one row of lace. That will take you to row 12 and I'll see you back. I have finished the row repeat four times um, and 12 rows completed. Now I'm gonna just do two rows of straight knit. This is one and two. Okay, 
you're going to cut off a long tail. Open your latch, put it between the last white and the first black, and we are going to cast off. Putting that yarn tail on your needle. And we're going to rotate our barrel and we're going to remove our stitches. Getting the hang of the pattern, you guys. Realizing how absolutely beautiful it is, yet how simple it is. Here we go. I'm going to continue removing these. Make my second one, and then we will attach them together. Aren't they just so pretty? I love them. Okay, so we're going to, let's just take one here. Let's work on this edge here with our waist yarn. You're going to find yourself two stitch markers. Trust me, you're going to want them because when you start closing this up, they get tight. So it's hard to uh, just sometimes find those last stitches. So take your, your uh, waist yarn and pull on it. And this loop is where it's coming through. See the loop that it's coming through? You're going to put a stitch marker in there. That's going to be your first one. Look to the left of that and you'll see where your working yarn is. That loop that's right beside it is your last stitch. We know that we have 22 stitches on our machine. So there's 22 loops around here that we need to, to join, okay? All of these little white ones are your rows, which is why it's so important that uh, you use a waist yarn that's a different color so you can see them. So we're gonna count around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is 11, and this is 12. This is the very corner. So we now that we know that, we're gonna put our hook under number 12, count that as the first loop worked, Go up to 11, take that loop and pull it through the one on your hook, that's two. You're gonna go down to the bottom, grab that next one, pull it through the loop on your hook, three. Up to the top, take the next one, four, and keep doing that, down to the bottom, five, up to the top, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, gonna do this all the way to the end. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. See how it gets a little harder to see? 19, 20. This will always be 21, this bottom one. If it's not, then you've missed a loop somewhere. And if you've missed a loop, your row's gonna unravel as soon as you take your waist yarn off. So pull up on that 21, take that stitch marker out, finish that loop. Pull up on that last one, which is hard to find sometimes. So that bobby pin is essential. Yarn over, pull it through. Then you're gonna yarn over your tail and pull it through that loop and pull to tighten. Now, if you have a longer tail, you're gonna put it on your needle and you're gonna take it through the seam here and out the side, putting your finger underneath that loop because you don't wanna push it all the way under. You just need to get it out of the way so that you can unravel this without it tangling around your yarn tail. Okay, so now we're gonna roll up our, our edge till we get the very top row, pinch the stitch and pull. Go down a few stitches Roll it up, pinch the stitch, and pull that very top row. We have to do this for the top only. When you put waste yarn at the end of your project, it's very easy to take off. Well, this is easy too. You just have to have one extra step by pulling that, that yarn. Okay, and there we go. I have the last one undone. And we can just pull. And it's not wrapping around this little white um, loop that's there. Remove our waist yarn, it's snagged for me, but that's okay, we're gonna just, uh, it's snagged on my, see how it's split? Because my yarn went through it, so all you gotta do is cut that off. Just like that, I can't use this again. So I'm gonna throw that out. And then you just grab your little loop that you hid, 
and you pull it out and you're ready to use it. Take your piece and stretch it lengthwise and widthwise. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, now we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna smooth that out. We're gonna pull on that yarn tail, put that onto our needle. And we're gonna reinforce that, that center. So smooth it all out so you can, just like that. It's nicer that way. Okay, then go around that circle one time just to reinforce it and make it nice and tight. Easily done, just like so. Pull on it. Now we're going to put our sides together, just like this. Make sure it's smooth on the inside. Bring it up. And we're going to mattress stitch this the best that we can. We have our yarn end on this side, so I'm just going to take it around to this other side of that circle just so I can join my, my edge just like that. Then I'm going to just go in there and I'm going to eyeball it. With this lace, you cannot really see the row. So we're going to just do the mattress stitch until we get a little ways down and then you can, you can easier see the stitches. There we go. Now I can kind of see it. But if you can't, um, don't be stressed about it. Because of the of the lacy aspect to this, um, you're not going to see it if you're a little bit off, okay? But I can I can see where my row is right here, okay? And here, and go in, doing the same thing you did up the side of the mitt, the best you can up the side of the thumb. Okay, I'm going to do one more right here and one more right there. Oops. Then I'm going to turn it because it's easier for me to pull this way. Squeeze at the bottom and pull. And you've just joined it, okay? So now what you're going to do is you're just going to finish off this top. So you're going to take your yarn up to the very corner right there. And up to the very corner right there. And you can tie these two together. Go ahead and hide this shorter one into the into the work. And cut it off, get it out of our way. We're gonna grab our mitt. Okay, so remembering that for our mitt, this is the wrong side. You know, if you have a long enough tail on here, you can actually go ahead and hide this one. I I'm going to. I was going to use it for sewing, but I have a long enough one on my thumb. Don't cut the other one off on your other mitt until you know for sure that, that the one on your thumb is long enough. And then I'm just going to hide this up into here. Remember, this is the wrong side of my work. Get that out of the way. There's my thumb. And this is the wrong side of my work. I want the right side of my work to be against the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that inside out or right side out. So just flip it around just like that. Give it a little bit of a stretch. Then you're going to just pop it right into that hole just like that. You can see where this is going. <laughs> you're going to thread your needle. And then I'm going to line up this side here to this side here. And I'm just going to sew it around. I'm going to go through there one more time. Pick up the very corner. Put your hand in there if you have to help you get it. Very corner. Don't take too big of a piece. And then we're going to just stitch it around. It fits beautifully. Okay. And I did try it on my thumb to make sure it was the right length, and it is. If your thumb is a little bit longer, you want to go longer. If it's shorter, go shorter. Okay. Picking up the top row and attaching it. Friends, isn't this a fun project? Please don't forget to hit that like and the subscribe. I harp on that a lot. Well, I don't harp on it, but I mention it because it's important to me. Um, I like to know how many people are, are subscribed, and it's just fun to watch it grow. It really, really is. And uh, when you hit that like button, then then uh, YouTube recognizes that my channel is being watched, and 
they will promote it to a wider audience. So in a sense, when you're doing that, you're helping me out a lot. So I'd really appreciate that when you hit the like button under every video and subscribe once if you haven't done so already. And persevere through the ads <laughs> because I am monetized. So that means that um, I get paid on my channel. Uh, it's not like huge amounts or anything, of course, um, but it's the advertisers that pay the YouTubers so, who have been monetized. And so um, when you watch the ads, that helps uh, support my channel. So I appreciate that very much. Okay, we're going to keep sewing that all the way around. Almost back at the corner. There we go. I'm going to knot that off. One more time. Hide my tail. I can hide it around the thumb here. Going that way once, then coming back. Cut it off. Turn it right side out. Friends, that is such a beautiful mitt. And there we go. Like, isn't that just absolutely, I don't know. I just love it, but I love pretty things. So I think that that's just like, love it, love it, love it, love it. Can't wait to see the ones that you make in whatever color combinations you make. You can, you could change the colors every three rows and have a patterning that way too. And it would be absolutely beautiful. Go ahead, attach the thumb to your other mitt, and then I'll see you back. Okay, friends, there they are. Oh, I love them so much. You know, they have, of course, some breathability in them because of the lace. But if you want them to be a little bit warmer, just go pick up a really light pair of mitts that you put on and then put these over top. And then you have the versatility of wearing them for warmth because they are still quite thick. Or when it's not as cool of a day out, um, they're just perfect. They're perfect. I love them. So please, please, please show me in, your, in my Facebook group the ones that you make. I'd love to see different colors in these. Um, and again, so easy to adjust just by adding another um, patterning of three rows. We'll make them larger and extra large. I would say these are small, medium. You could even, if you have extra small hands, just take out one row of pattern of three row patterning and, uh, and they should be perfect for you. Oh, so great. I love it when something turns out so nice. <laughs> oh. So thank you again for joining me in this tutorial. I just... Um, I'm excited about these little mittens and I hope that you make yourself some and make some for gifts and just have a great time doing it. I also have this beanie that matches that I've made on my 22 needle machine. Please check out that video as well and make yourself a set. The link will be down below. So again, friends, I sure appreciate having you um, as a part of my channel community of friends and uh, you mean a lot to me. And so thank you for watching. Thank you for making and thanks for showing me in my Facebook group um, and others as well, because it's an inspiration to see uh, your makes from my videos. So thank you again. Take care, friends, and we'll see you in the next video.